Well, hello, dear motherfuckers, and welcome to your SmackDown review. Now, this show was a thousand times better than Raw. I'm watching it in YouTube clips, but I was entertained. There were several segments that I really enjoyed. Um, mostly the stuff involving Miz and Orton and Wyatt. Um, so we started off with Wyatt. Uh, challenging Orton to come find him, you know, he's always telling people that, you know, to, to come find him and everything, you know, here's the thing, it's like, what, what kills me is I'm watching TNA's, you know, um, uh, Decay stuff, you know, the leader Decay, and, I, I, like, TNA is showing WWE how the Wyatts are supposed to be, okay, like I said, Decay, so, but, WWE is showing me something tonight that we'll get to. We'll get to it. Um, so we got the Usos in the Ascension defeating American Alpha, Heat Slater, and Rhino. I think this is probably the first match that the Ascension have won since beating the New Age Outlaws at Royal Rumble 2015. Could somebody maybe correct me on that if I'm wrong, but... I don't remember them winning after that. If I'm remembering correctly, they were pushed onto superstars pretty much right after that. So I don't, you know, I, I think that's probably their first win that they're not even directly responsible for. Uh, Heath Slater got a massive tag. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie and say that he's a big star or anything, but the thing is, the, the hot tag that Slater got uh, that's an example of like a hot tag. He got the tag and the crowd just popped for him. And, and I said this ever since 2012. I knew that Slater could be something entertaining. I knew that Slater could be something good. Um, they just needed to put their, you know, uh, they just needed to fucking write it down, basically. Make it happen. You know, the writers were giving Slater nothing. They were putting him in 3MB. They had some lazy fucking ideas. Hey, let's put let's put him in an imaginary band. Okay, so are we going to even, you know, do anything creative? I mean, think about it. The guy's in an imaginary band. You know how many, you know, opportunities you have for comedy there? I mean, you, you don't even... Uh, you didn't even see any effort put into this guy's career. I mean, and you see this all the time. What kills me is like, you know, even if the segment would, would be campy or cheesy, it, at least go for it. At least do something, you know, with the guy. So I'm happy. I would just like to see a little bit more of Heath Slater's family expand on it. I didn't see that, um, you know, and... So I would like to see them go back to the trailer park, go back to the um, the hors d'oeuvres and shit, you know, like do more of that. You don't have to go back to the trailer park, but maybe Slater could bring out his wife. They could do something entertaining with his kids. You know, I don't get to introduce the guy's whole family, but before SmackDown even goes on air and it's like, you know, and, and, and I'm... I'm kind of confused by that. Slater is also showing the pool that he talked about, but they put all this shit on WWE.com. And I'm asking myself, if they have all these ideas, why are they just making them exclusive? All these interviews, sit-downs with Michael Cole, these telling interviews, you know, with Brian Kendrick. Why is it not on Raw or SmackDown? This is what kills me. Some of this stuff is actually good. It would make the show more entertaining. Instead, when we get the promos and interviews on the actual show, they're boring as fuck and they're lazily done. So I don't really understand. Why do they have this lackadaisical approach to the, to the main shows, you know, the shows that get the ratings? Well, they're supposed to anyway. Or... Are they just that complacent that they just don't give a fuck and they'll just put it, you know, wherever they want? But most of the time, I've been noticing that some quality stuff ends up on WWE.com. There's some fun things on there that could be fun for the show. And maybe it wouldn't suck as much if they put a couple of things in there. And that was one thing that stuck out to me, like the segment with Slater's family. 
Maybe it would it would run a little bit long for TV, but edit it down. Do something. Um, they they spliced this up throughout the actual show, but I'm watching it on YouTube, so it was all together. But I'm gonna praise WWE for this. The Orton backstage segments were creative. Orton moved some type of fixture on the on the wall uh, that Wyatt had put up. Orton walks away from it. It goes back to its original position. Um, they, they like, wrote on the wall, like, I guess, in spray paint, or maybe it's supposed to be PG blood, you know, um, prey or, or predator, uh, choose wisely. There's two doors there. Eric Rowan is, like, creeping around in the back, around corners. Orton opens up one door. It's like a cardboard cut out of himself with, like, the eyes cut out. Then um, Orton opens up another door, and Eric Rowan is on the side, but Orton can't see him. Uh, then he then he actually appears behind Wyatt while he's cutting his promo, and I thought that that was pretty funny. Uh, that that he, they actually found that Orton managed to find that space, that like imaginary void that Wyatt is in when he's doing his promos. Like, where the fuck is he? Uh, you know, it, it, and the Orton actually came up and, and, and started punching him. And I thought that that was pretty creative. I mean, I think it's like a little bit too little too late. But hell, I mean, it's something they were thinking. That's what basically why I'm saying I, I'm going to give them credit. They were thinking here. They're like, okay, so let's do something creepy backstage. Uh, I don't know why they don't do more compound stuff like you know, come on. You know that WWE was taking a look at TNA when they did the whole compound thing with New Day. Why don't they go back and do it better? Why don't they explore the compound, show us more weird stuff? Um, you know, I also, like I said, when they showed the compound, I think they edited it up a little bit too weird where you really didn't even get to appreciate anything. Um, you, you, know, the, you know, New Day just, like, runs away at the end, so... They could have done something cool like that. Like they could have actually had a real Wyatt Bray, uh, you know, a real Bray Wyatt Orton compound match like at No Mercy. That would be interesting. Imagine if it like takes place in a cabin or something like that. You know, like it's funny. We haven't seen a lot of these matches that don't take place like in the ring and it would be cool. Like the last time... We got to see something like that was, um, you know, John Cena and Eddie Guerrero in a backlot brawl. You know, we used to get the Iron Circle match, um, the dungeon match with, you know, Owen Hart and Ken Shamrock, uh, the Lions Den match. We can't, you know, with the same guys. Why can't we get more of that? It's like, it's a little bit confusing why they wouldn't go for more variety. Why are we always in the ring when there's opportunities to, you know, add some intrigue to the show? You know, and th these ideas were running through my head as I'm watching these segments. Uh, but this, it was good. I mean, you know, if you're going to bash it, you know, a little bit too little too late. Yeah, yeah, we know that, but we're watching the show currently. And I will give credit where credit's due. I, I liked what I saw. Uh, Carmella and Natalia beat Naomi and Nikki. Um, you know, it, it, it was okay. At least they're making Carmella look strong. Um, you know, Carmella shows a little bit of attitude, so it's, uh, it, it's, it's all right. Um, you know, I, I don't know why, but the, the raw stuff is annoying me that the whole Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey thing, it's just, I, I don't know. I really hate Raw. I, you know, I like Charlotte. I've said that time and time again. I did a whole rant on how they should have never gave the belt to Sasha. Um, you know, and I'm just watching SmackDown. I don't know. It seems fresher to me in some way. I, I don't know why that is, but, you know, that's just the way how it is, I suppose. Uh, the Miz was... Uh, was cutting a promo in the ring. It was like his appreciation night. He had posters of himself all up, and he's he's talking to his parents, to Ziggler's parents. And guys, this is what I have to say: 
out of everybody on the roster right now, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. The Miz is doing the best promo wise. The 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 Miz looks like the biggest star at this stage of the game. I'm not even fucking kidding here. You, you know, it, it's the Miz is really trying, especially since this brand split. I've even said the guy has seemed to have a, a, a new uh, lead on life. Basically, he's been cutting great promos. He, I don't know. He looks, you know, fresh as a daisy. Ever since they put him with Maurice, ever since he beat Zack Ryder, like you know, I was criticizing him beating Zack Ryder because you know I didn't like what they did to Ryder. Ryder is deserving. You know, Ryder tries to get himself over on the internet. They fuck him over. They all of a sudden give him a mania moment, and they just take it away from him just like that. That show, WWE, is just full of assholes. McMahon's a fucking asshole, but we know all this. Um, so with that in mind, I'm like thinking to myself, like, you know, this is fucked up. They're just giving it to The Miz. The Miz hasn't really been doing anything. But ever since they, you know, uh, Miz got the heat on, on beating Zack Ryder, well, I don't think they fed off that heat enough. But the thing is, it's like he's really been on fire. And this was a great promo from Dolph Ziggler. And I know, you know, I, I want to say the negative side of me wants to say, oh, we've heard this promo time and time again from Ziggler, you know, every single time. Oh, you know, I could do better. I could, you know, but I don't know what it is. But when Ziggler gets fiery, I listen to him. And I want to see the match because now they put some stakes on it where actually it makes sense for them to have a match. Z you know, the whole thing that Ziggler said that, you know, sometimes something you love doesn't love you back and that he tries really hard. This is all that he has. And, you know, he's not as good as he, you know, uh, not as big of a star as he thought he was going to be. It was like a shoot promo. It works. It's like, but it makes me think that, this is what it makes me think. I, I mean, I guess they, they told Ziggler to go out there. It did not sound scripted at all. Pour your heart out. But the thing is, he's out there. He's already cut this type of promo three times. It's different. It still, you know, spoke to me. But the thing is, they hear Ziggler pouring his heart out, like, what's been like three, four times already. And they give you like these glimmers of hope that maybe he's going to be a big star finally. You know, uh, that maybe they might finally give the guy his just dues. You know, the moment at Survivor Series with Sting, that was his big moment. We thought, oh man, now this means that Ziggler, you know, he was the lone survivor. Ziggler is going to be, you know, the big star now in WWE, and that did not come to fruition. I kid you not, even the month after that, the guy was being jobbed out again. They wasted no fucking time beating Ziggler back down the rankings and making him into a nobody once more. But uh, now he's put his career on the line versus Miz's Intercontinental title, and now it's like, well, I don't know. I guess this means now that Ziggler is going to win the title because I don't think his career is going to be over. Or maybe it is. And at least Miz brought up that, you know, you're not going to go to Raw. You're not going to go to NXT. You're not going to be gone for 30 days. And both of these guys, they were on, like, in this promo. that They, they were putting their full energy into it. And, you know, this is the type of thing I'm talking about. Why can't we get this kind of effort from everybody on the roster? Are the writers only allowing this? I mean, what is it? Are, are we, like, not going to try? Uh, I, I don't understand, really, like, what it is. Why can't we get these guys, you know, giving 110% every single time? Uh, I, I mean, why does it have to be half-assed? Why, why can't they be giving the same energy that Miz and Ziggler give? There's, there's no reason. Why can't everybody cut a great promo, have a match that has meaning? Why, why is it like once in a while, once in a blue moon, 
You, you know, I'm getting sick of this. Consistency. This is all I'm asking for here. Is it so much to ask? Uh, Alexa Bliss uh, beat Becky Lynch up on the ramp before uh, their match. Uh, I didn't really like... This just felt more awkward than anything. It just didn't have a good transition. It wasn't placed well. I don't know what it was. She beats her up. Uh, Becky is just laying there prone. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then she's just like laying there. Like she's not even real. Like she's like a fucking mannequin or something like that. Or like, you know, yeah, like something that they would practice CPR on. You know, something like that. Like paramedics would practice CPR on, like, she's just lifeless, just laying there, like, not even selling it, she's not moving, I, I don't know, this just felt really awkward, it fell out of place, I didn't think that it needed to be there, um, then we had Kurt Hawk, Kurt Hawkins cutting a promo, uh, once again, backstage, you know, I really don't get this, so, Hawkins' debut is just being there in his video. And there's the thing. Like, this is what I don't understand about WWE, and I never will. It, it, it's like, why do they think people still care? I'm not saying that Hawkins is not being entertaining in these video packages, that he's not being funny and goofy and stuff like that. But it's like, guys, this is Kurt Hawkins. The guy hasn't been there for four years, and four years ago, nobody gave a fuck about Kurt Hawkins. What was the last thing that Kurt Hawkins did before he left WWE? I, I think he had a tag team with Tyler Rex. He was jobbing to Ryback. Do you think that anybody still remembers? And they have lost a lot of viewers since he's been there last. Half these people... You know, I guess they remember Kurt Hawkins because this is the hardcore that have been watching, you know, since they're babies like myself. I think that's all that's left. So maybe they are counting on that. But the thing is, it's like, how many times is he going to cut this same style of video? I mean, they're milking for all it's worth. I mean, okay, yes, yeah, some of the jokes he's saying are funny, but it's Kurt Hawkins at the end of the day, guys. You know, this was a, a guy that's just an average wrestler. They didn't have a spot for him. They brought him in with Zack Ryder. They bounced him around with Vance Archer, tag team to tag team. They couldn't find a spot where he really stuck on the roster. He was just another guy. He was a jobber. He didn't even win any matches. I, I mean, how is it going to be any different? I mean, is it is it going to be the same, it's going to be the same story, basically, I think, like with um, uh, Jinder Mahal, bring him back, give him a win, job him out, then have him get a win out of nowhere, like, that's something I, even, I didn't even talk about in my Raw review, guys, Jinder Mahal got a win, like a week ago, two weeks ago, wasn't even there on Raw, was he even there for the previous week of Raw? They, they gave Jinder Mahal that victory over Jack Swagger. Yeah, I think it was uh, two weeks ago, actually. And speaking of Jack Swagger, where was he on this show? This is another thing like I have to say. Where was Baron Corbin? Nowhere to be found on this show. Where was Jack Swagger? Nowhere to be found on this show. Jack Swagger, hot acquisition. Where is he? Where the fuck is he? Uh, you know, he's, he, he's on commentary last week. We're trying to build a feud with Corbin and Swagger. Not a fucking peep. That's why I really struggle to say that these are great shows. I mean, you know, man. I mean, when you really sit back and you look at WWE. Well, let's, let's get through the, the main event here first before I go into full rant mode. So, um, you, you had uh, AJ beating... Um, Ambrose in the main event. Cena was on uh, commentary. And man, let me tell you something. With Moro, Ronaldo, and Cena, hard selling, no mercy. It's like, that's how it's done. Cole is so fucking complacent. He's lost, well, he never had a, an amazing amount of energy, but he's lost even that little bit amount of energy that he had. 
Um, and he, I'm gonna, you know, like I have even said that Cole, you know, was all right when he was on SmackDown during the first brand extension, and when he took over for Jr. in late '98 and early '99 during the Attitude Era. You know, let's remember some of the Attitude Era's biggest moments had Michael Cole's voice over them. Let you know, let's not forget that. And I will tell you this. I couldn't help but feel in the network that if JR commentated over some of those bits, it would have been even better, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. We'll save that for maybe another future anti coal video. I think I've already milked that cow for all it's worth, but anyway, Cena finally got his come up and he uh, gave the attitude adjustment to both Ambrose and AJ. So finally, Cena looks strong. I mean, I don't know where these guys, but I can't, I know you guys are happy seeing Cena get beat by Ambrose, but that does not make me happy. I'm not saying give the guy a 16th world title, but I don't, I don't like seeing Cena look weak, especially after all these years of building the fuck out of him. Uh, you know, I don't agree with that style of booking, that style of writing to make Cena look like a bitch. Um, so, yeah, but anyway, like I said, it, it's like, where was Corbin and Swagger? It's like, I get a kick out of this. They make this whole thing. Nobody's excited for Swagger. Hat on backwards, Swagger. Swagger's here. You know, Swagger's now renewed. He's on SmackDown. They make this whole big deal out of it. He's not even there. Corbin is going to basically, uh, you know, challenge for the world title one time or another. They're hinting at it, but he's not even on the fucking show. Where do you hide a guy that's like 6'8", almost 300 pounds? Where is he? You know what I'm saying? It's like the same thing with Swagger, another guy that's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Where do you hide that motherfucker at? Like, you know... Uh, and once again, whatever happened with, you know, Corbin's supposed to be like one of their big stars. He was in the six-pack challenge. You know, um, the fuck is his name? Um, you know, uh, Apollo Cruz. Where is he? Wasn't he also supposed to be a big star? They only had three matches on this show. Um, you know, so it's like they couldn't find anything. I'm not saying matches, but segments, a little something, a little sun here or there. You know, no promo from Corbin, no promo for Swagger. No, you know, they, they're missing out on a lot of stuff here. Also, Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan, nobody, you know, like they didn't even care to show them on their own show. Uh, this was better than last week's show and. Ten times better than Raw, but still, it's like, and they had a lot, I love the Miz and Ziggler segment, I love Orton and, and Wyatt segment, love, liked, I don't know how to really put it into, like, the degrees of how much I liked it, but it was good, and it was better than what we usually get, we'll say. So, even though the show's still lacking, it was alright, it was okay, it was decent, which I'm finally happy to say. Do people really think I enjoy sitting down? You know, I think you guys know I couldn't even get through fucking Clash of Champions. So do you really think I really enjoyed, uh, you know, and I I'm, and I'm still haven't watched Clash of Champions beyond the three matches that I saw. And I really don't feel bad about it. In, in, in fact, I feel less stressed out having to sit through that fucking... Uh, you know, three hours and seven minutes. I mean, my God, the minute I saw that shit, I was like, fuck it. I'm not sitting there through all that fucking bullshit. All right, motherfuckers, there's your SmackDown review.